So this was the uh, atonement recommended in Shastras that was told to the king, and so he accepted that I must do this no matter what. If I die, let me die, but I, at least I can try to uh, rectify the situation. So when everyone heard, when everyone in the kingdom heard that their beloved king, Kula Shekhar, the king of Utkal, what we call Orissa, was going to perform this amazing feat to counteract his Guru Aparad, then everyone came to see, to watch it. And it's like a spectacle, like uh, feeding Christians to the lions or something. <laughs> Romans used to do that in the Colosseum. They would gather the Christians and throw them in the Colosseum and let out lions and then lions would eat them. This is the Italian idea of fun. <laughs> so people, you read know history. So then people, thousands of people came to watch the king lie on a hot copper plate. Everyone was concerned that the king, as soon as he lied on the plate, he would leave his body. Can you imagine? If he lie on a hot skillet, he'd be burned to death. So when the king came there, he, he, uh, they, were, they were lamenting. Oh, king, if you lie on this plate, we will be deprived of our master. You are Lord, you are our Father, you are everything for us. Because we heard earlier that he was taking care of the citizens, which are called praja, just like his own children, which was the original type of culture India had. But now it's every man for himself. Someone becomes a king or prime minister and they try to grab as much money as they can from the people and abscond with as much property and fixed assets as they can before they get caught. <laughs> quite different tune than we read about King Parikshit and King Yudhisthira and King Kula Shekhar, all the great kings of the past. So the king replied to the people that were lamenting like this, that they might lose their beneficent king. He said, listen, who's the real master anyway? Who's the real king? Jagannath is the master of everyone. Don't be concerned about my death. One who has taken birth will die one day. I do not fear my death. I do, I do not want to be... Rather, I'm, I'm afraid of being punished by Yamaraj for my offense to my guru. Whether I die or survive by doing this act does not matter to me. Lord Chakradhar, that means J Jagannath, one who holds the chakra, he knows everything. He will do what it, what it, whatever is good for me, but I must do my duty. Please, all of you kindly chant the holy name of Hari. That will help me. So all the praja or citizens are gathered around the hot plate, uh, the uh, hot copper plate, and they're chanting the holy name. So obviously that's beneficial if someone's leaving their body to hear the kirtan of the holy name in their ears. After saying this, the king started to meditate on Niladri. Niladri Bihari. Uh, Adri means mountain, Nila means blue. The one who enjoys on the blue mountain. It's, a, it's an affectionate name for Jagannath, Niladri. So he, he started offering prayers, all glories to the Lord, and uh, many, many long prayers he offered here. And we're, we're just summarizing this. He started chanting different names of the Lord. Sri Rama, Sri Krishna, Sri Hari, Mukunda, Madhava, Murari, Achyuta, Ananta, Govinda, Shama, Sundar, Sadaranda, Bhaja, Sundar, Vamsi, Pani, Radha, Valava, Pranamani, Daya, Sagar, Dasarati, Sridhar, Shikara, Sripati. Lakshmi Nayak Chakrapani Shri Sita Balava Ragumani Vanamali Okamsari Gopi Jivana Dityahari Shri Vatsalanchana Keshava Dina Bandava Vasudeva Va Bhava Modana Bhagavan Jagat Jivan Janardhan Nice Nam Sankirtan. Very many all these names are full of different leaders. <coughs> So while chanting these various names of the Lord and hearing Harikata vibrating his ears and mem meditating on Jagannath, he climbed up the top of the hot copper plate. The plate was the copper plate was so hot that wet wood would burn to ashes. If you put if you put wet wood on top of the hot copper plate, it would burn to ashes, basma. But still, without any fear, the king offered his prostrated obeisances on top of the copper plate. The king's body started to burn. His head, hands, and feet were burning. But still, the king was not afraid. Remembering Lord Jagannath, he continued to offer obeisances. Lord Jagannath, 
who is the cause of everything, he understood the whole situation of his surrender devotee, King Kulashekar, and he became very merciful to the king. Immediately, the fire became cooling like water by the mercy of the Lord. The king's burning body was immediately cooled. All the assembled people were crying in great grief because they couldn't perceive this. They saw the fire underneath the copper bed or plate and they could understand how hot the plate was, a raging fire underneath. But the, but the king was perceiving by the mercy of Lord Jagannath that a copper plate became as cool as a mountain stream. So no one will find any difficulty lying in a mountain stream. And they were all wailing, Oh, we're so unfortunate, we're losing our king. Who will maintain us? When everyone, everyone was crying like this, the king rose from the copper plate. He looked effulgent like a second sun. And again he offered obeisances on the copper plate. He was cool and collected, unconcerned as a swan playing in the cooling water of a river. Everyone surrounding the plate was very astounded to see this. The king offered his obeisances 36 times. Then the Lord Jagannath appeared next, standing next to the copper plate and he lifted King Kulashekar off the burning plate. And he said, Now, O king, you will be glorified all over the universe. Never before, never in the future will ever be one as pious as you. Now you are free from all your sins and offenses. So due to the Yogamaya potency of the Lord, no one could see this going on. So King Kulashekar, he's a real person, you can read in the history of India. He really lived in... He had, what was the name of that book he wrote? We, Prabhupada has it. What's it called? King Kulish Prayers. I think it's called the BBT Iskon in Delhi. Prabhupada wrote a commentary on a book called the Prayer the Prayers of King Kulashekar. He is one of the twelve Alwars. These are famous bhakti saints of the medieval period, or actually even before that, about 1100 A.D. The Alwars in South India they were the forerunners of this bhakti cult, and there was Andal Andal Alwar and Tirumala, Tirumala and Kulashekar. There are about 12 of them. And they wrote in the uh, Tamil, I think they wrote in Tamil language. This is saying Kulashekar. So this is an uh, amazing pastime. Lord Jagannath came and, and arranged for this. So this, I mean, the moral of the story is that we should, uh, I mean, specifically we should keep the dust on our forehead. <laughs> The dust is purifying. Raja Raj, this holy dust, is very, very purifying. Our saints are telling us, our Mahajans tell us in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhakta Paraduli, Bhakta Parajal, Bhakta Uchishtatin Mahabal. It says that uh, the dust of the feet of the Vaishnavas, Bhakta Paraduli, Duli means like go Duli, Duli means, Duli means Raj or dust. Bhakta Paraduli, Bhakta Parajal, Bhakta Uchishta, Teen Mahabal. That these things are very powerful, Mahabal. Very, very strong. Very powerful. The dust of the feet of the Vaishnavas, or the uh, water that is used to wash their feet, or their remnants of their food, something coming from their mouth, if they've taken some Mahaprasad and they left something. If one partakes of these or honors these, then easily he can get Krishna Prima because these things are all transcendental, 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 transcendental.